first one was, uh, was probably what's this professionally up to a very high standard uh, for safety purposes. Um, anyway, it's been, it's been running all over the place, always goes on its own power. And yes, as it goes around, you'll see that John Carver's, known to all of us up here as John the Cat, has got the cat on his shoulders. And I always say this, he looks so placid, you they might think it would be a, a soft toy, but he's a real cat. Many years ago, the cat was start the collection. Ran it during the 60s, and again, in the late 80s. The toilet work uh, was replaced in 2005 and 2006, and we do a tremendous amount of work in keeping these engines up and running. There's up here Thursday night, right? I was looking at the get ready the engines to win this weekend. Uh, and uh, there was one particular chap, one of our trustees there, and he was actually cleaning the gears, the inside gears of the engine. Yeah, very proud of that, organised by the RAC, was the most economical and reliable in its particular class. And as far as just said, the big thing was it could be driven, it was, anything under five tonnes could be uh, steered and driven by one man. Although we're all women these days, we've got lots of lovely lady volunteers, I'm happy to say, but those days are one man driven and steered. But of course, if you get an engine that's like that, you halve your labour, labour costs drop a bit right at the other and you pull the uh, anti-balance plough between them, up to six furrows on the plough. We've got one here today. Luckily, these engines were one of a pair, Winter and Sandingham. Uh, Sandingham and the Royal Castles, uh, uh, appropriately. Um, used to the Saffron Walls and Plough Company. Now, originally, they were going to Russia. But the uh, war intervened, and they did not the current war, the night the First World War. Uh, and they were known as Fan and Pat was their original name. Uh, John Patton had them, they, they went to Hardwick from yours. That dropped onto the ground, but as soon as you start winching, that locks into the ground, and instead of pulling the vehicle backwards, it locks it in place and, and pulls out whatever you're trying to winch. Several years ago, Brian, we had a, an oak tree which had sadly rotted and ha and it was uh, in danger of coming down in the wrong place, and we. Uh, we like putting trees up here, not pulling them down, but that one had to be brought down. But uh, it was an old oak tree, and it weighed coming out there through the top of the safety bells. It's steam. It's a perfectly uh, sound environmental engine. All right, yeah, there's some smoke when it starts up. Fair enough, but it is a steam engine. Run by, run by, powered entirely by steam. What about this horse uh, made of bathing stone? There's quite a few Wallace engines here in the ring today. What was that going around now? We just said, oh, it's a Tasker, what's Tasker? Tasker. Tasker. Um, Taskers were built down at Andover in Hampshire. And uh, this one was a little bit unusual. They tried an experiment. And it was done by Taskers as, as a bit of an experiment. But I don't think it caught on. I, I could imagine it uh, with a little bit of wear there. New, really, built in 1930. Which, for uh, steam engine times, is quite towards the end of building steam engines. It was viewed to Trimley and uh, Trimley and Campbelly Urban District Council, which is the name carried on the, uh, the headboards now. It was sold on by them to the Hunt uh, Steam Rolling and Ploughing Company, although it never did the plough, obviously, in 1940 for work uh, rolling the uh, runways and oh, sorry, the runways and roads in the in very increasing number of uh, air bases that were being built in the east of England. So while building the air bases for the city, he has had a new acquisition just recently, his son Oliver, or Ollie. Uh, and I saw him in the ring, he's going to be the next generation of uh, steam enthusiasts. He's often seen his bike Central Railway the other week. We took, uh, we took the Wallace all the way up there, 
not on steam, it had to go on the low loader. There were two other engines from the park, all I have to love for it, and those two lads and lasses, those lads and lasses, worked tirelessly all weekend keeping that engine clean. Here's the little engine, um, unusually it's green. Most of the Wallaces were in that brown cover colour, but when Ian was getting this ready uh, to repaint it, he discovered this green underneath, and it was the colour of Turner's of Ice Cap, he got a mark of F type full size. He is chairman of the Sussex Steam Engine Club. And um, got another, we've got some more miniatures coming around. Some other, other uh, things to complete with a canopy on. Uh, it's quite nice to see them with a canopy, but it's a bit difficult to, to drive them because obviously you can't sit in the engine. Uh, you've got to sit on the trailer behind it. You've got to try and uh, reach through under the canopy. And joining the uh, end of the lineup is uh, the little crane engine, the thorough crane engine. This is the uh, first time this one has been out in uh, public appearance. Having a little bit of problem uh, getting enough steam in there today to uh, make it up into the arena on the road. Oh, we've got the first time out. Well, they won't check the first time out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and talk about burrows, there's the comparative class who's coming in next is, is a burrow called Fuller, which is a single crank compound. Here we are, then we're going to be used by the Exit Protection and Storing Engine Company. Uh, acquired uh, by the present owner a few years ago, it's been traded all over the south of England, in fact, further afield. Uh, Reassembled completely over the winter of 2002 3. Sorry, mixed up with the belt for a storm bench, 
So the doing paperwork, putting down, going up trees, making timber for timber buildings and fence posts. So it works all year round as a, as a general agriculture engine. And it's now owned by the Coppola family. Uh, <laughs> what have we got now? It's a much bit of a labour enforcer because we've got the famous uh, symbol at the front there, the, uh, the, the horse rampant, or the passing horse, whichever you like to call it, which is the county symbol of Kent. And Kent was so proud of the fact that they got Rocky, they got over in Ford Rubber Rogers, the largest builder of steamrollers anywhere in the world at the time, because they allowed them to use the Kent County Council symbol. Going. It was a bit of hard work, particularly we were still exporting steam engines abroad, right up until the 1950s, in fact, the extension was going to Argentina. But uh, then, of course, the play, Avening Abarth was going on, and Barthes and Avening really started building uh, uh, diesel powered rollers, and Abarth was, of course, carrying on building steam rollers, and we still see the working today been great in our valley for many years here. It has superbly turned out the uh, power. Sorry, power. I'm all here. Don't go wrong, but don't get back. Don't get shot. No, don't go wrong. Don't get shot. Oh, dear. Uh, this is John of the Barton's uh, engine, Hermes, built again in 1936. That was the connection I was trying to make. It was the last but one of its kind to be built. Uh, driven by Jimmy Smith at the time, who was chairman of the Road Roller Association, but it was the last working engine uh, at the time. It, built the, it helped to build the uh, Red Room Bypass in 1960. Uh, we, we already mentioned elephants of uh, the, the Road Roller contract. This was Dingles and Cornwall, who were the big attractions for the West Country, but they also sent engines all over the country. Red Blue Firebars, they say they helped to build that as late as 1960 it was working. Owned by Johnny Barton since 1982. It was a short break, uh, it was off the road while uh, uh, it was having major boiler work done. But uh, since then it's been back. It will feature as an article that I wrote some time ago that is coming out in the next season of Old Glory. Uh, which is a telling story. Uh, I'm going to ask the ones here a minute, but now we've got a full size one. This is uh, Jet, built in 1908, three-speed general purpose engine and spent its working life, not in this country, but down in Tasmania. It's built over here, exported to there, and that's where it worked all of its life. Came back to the UK in uh, preservation, now uh, owned by Dave Mancy. It's a pretty loud for many roads here, lovely big. Purpose engine, nice canopy on the top of it, so my uh, parcel is going for it. Going in front of me now is another old favourite of ours, Polly, which was built in 1931, uh, a batch of five from a company called uh, CNL Bannon. Uh, but the big thing is it's been with its current owner for over 20 years, Fred Streeter, who is a boiler and steam engineer in his own right. He started off working for other people and has been long a supporter of this valley. Part of his skill as a boiler maker is a fantastic accordion player. And I hope that you'll hear him in the, in the beer den tonight. We get to be quiet with beer enough. But uh, it's in his working clothes, Polly, as we say. It hasn't got any fancy bits on it. It's just without a canopy. Not all of them had canopies. It was an extra. You know, they all don't run about the driver getting wet. It was a canopy that was more there to protect the the, uh, the motion from getting water in amongst all the oil, really, more than anything. Bruce Frogbrook, I, I, I'll hand over to Brian for this one. Good to see Bruce back on the field. There, yeah, Bruce Frogbrook with his uh, power, 10 ton roll, built in 1923. He's worked for Pembroke Urban District Council. Was down the road with me, and he was so pleased because what Brian said is quite great. Well, he was the last working engine. He was on one of these famous auction sites and saw the original nameplate come up. He was on several extensive operations, 
for, for the camera. I know you won't find me saying that, but I'm saying it for a reason, because he's here today and he's with us because of the work of the wonderful surgeons and, and the cancer doctors, but he's been working for the cancer you pay that raises the money. You don't get all that money from the National Health, and that's what this money is all about, raising funds for cancer you pay. And uh, it's, it's because of that for the slow race for the width of engine in the arena. Thanks for all uh...